talking about Bollinger Bands, one of the most acceptable, well, most respected, most well used technical indicator. Now, one of the most popular questions, and one of the questions I'm asked the most, whether I'm going to, in fact, if I'm going to a dinner party, if I'm going to a seminar, if I'm going to do a presentation, it's just my friends. They constantly ask me, what should I buy? In fact, not an hour ago, I got a, a WhatsApp message from a friend. I said, what's the story with Apple? Should I buy it today? You know, because it's split. And the markets, you know, and pre-market went, went down, which was all expected. But my friend's not a, a trader and just happened to notice Apple was down. So what is? They asked me, should I buy? Well, you know what my answer is to everybody? Don't buy something unless you understand it and know it and study it. But then they asked me, what will the prices be tomorrow, next week, or next year? Well, wouldn't investing be easy if we knew the answer to these seemingly simple questions? Well, I don't have a Ouija board and I don't have a crystal ball. What I have is experience and knowledge and education. So if you're attending this class in the hopes that technical analysis has the answer to all these questions, nope, it doesn't. But can technical analysis improve your trading? That it surely can do. But so will a well-prepared trading plan as so will outstanding risk management. Now, Bollinger Bands were created by legendary money manager, John Bollinger. And one of the nicest thing about Bollinger and John, John Bollinger and Bollinger Bands is he is still active in the markets. It's one of the few indicators where you can learn directly from the horse's mouth. So anytime you want to learn about Bollinger Bands, instead of going out and finding somebody's far out adjusted strategy, you can go to www.bollingerbands.com and read it all directly from the man who developed it. But the how to use Bollinger Bands information out there usually pushes it back to the trader to interpret what the securities price is doing relevant to the bands. Now, we're actually gonna look at Bollinger Bands strategies, but not for a bit yet. Because before we do that, we need to understand what Bollinger Bands are. Because as long as you understand where they come from, how they're derived and what they're doing, you can figure out how to use them to figure your own strategies. Now, Bollinger Bands can be applied in all the financial markets, including equities, forex, commodities, and futures. Bollinger Bands can be used in most time frames from very short periods to hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. And that's one of the nice thing at Bollinger Bands for our type of trading, because we're all here because we're short-term traders, maybe position traders, maybe swing traders, but we're trading in short-term increments. Most people don't realize that a lot of indicators out there don't adjust well in short-term time periods. Where Bollinger Bands quickly adjust whether you're looking at a five-minute chart, a 15-minute chart, or one-hour chart. Now, Bollinger Bands answers one basic question. Are prices high or are prices low at the present moment on a relative basis? Now, price is considered high when it's near the upper band of the Bollinger Band, and it's low when it's near the lower band. Well, that's a bit of valuable information, isn't it? It's even more powerful if combined with other tools, such as other indicators for confirmation. Now, Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool, and specifically, they are a type of a trading band or envelope. Now, trading bands and envelopes serve the same basic purpose. They provide relative definitions of the high and low, except bands are built around a center line where an envelope encompasses price. And Bollinger Bands is based on a moving average line that we use to look at. So let's go over and let's take a look at Bollinger Bands on the chart. And we're gonna try to figure out where all these lines come from that make up the Bollinger Band. So now we're looking at my Euro US dollar chart. This is my standard teaching chart. I haven't picked the Euro US dollar, even though it's been trending up beautifully lately. And this is just a chart I use for teaching. We're looking at the Euro US dollar 30 minute chart. Okay, we're using a candlestick chart, but we could flip it over to a bar chart, no problem. But we like candles. 
So what we're looking at is a candlestick chart and this gold line moving through the center of price is the center line of a Bollinger Band. It's also a simple 20 period moving average line. That's it. But this is the basis or the start of Bollinger Bands. Now Bollinger Bands then applies what we call an upper band and a lower band based on a statistical calculation called standard deviation. Okay, and we're using a plus two standard deviation and a minus two standard deviation. Okay. And this is what gives us these dark green bands. Now, whether you're using gold or green, or whether you're using the border, or whether you're using the highlighter, these are things I did, okay? These are the settings. Doesn't make a difference. You can use pink and orange, green and white. You can use black and white. You can use whatever you want. It's only to, to give you the visual graphic depiction of the bands. And remember, I said it uses a 20 period moving average and the standard Bollinger Band uses the moving average based on the close. And it uses a standard deviation of two. But now you have to start to understand what a standard deviation is. And it's a complex statistical formula that was not derived for online trading. It wasn't derived for technical indicators. It wasn't derived for the financial markets. It is a calculation or mathematical formula that's used in statistics. Okay. Today, you're gonna have to learn and understand what it is. But believe me, after today, you'll never have to worry about it again because it dropped on your charts and always kind of it. But the only way that you'll ever see and understand what this indicator is telling you is, is by understanding what these two lines above and below the moving average are telling you. Now, interestingly, in the real world, no statistician would ever calculate standard deviation by hand. The calculations involved are somewhat complex and the risk of making a mistake is high. Now, standard deviation is the measure and I'm going to give it to you in the technical terms. I'm going to go back and try to explain it to you in simplistic terms. Now, I have a degree in taxation and finance. I have my master's degree in taxation and my undergraduate degree in accounting. And I still couldn't really tell you. I couldn't do the calculation for standard deviation. Okay. The standard deviation is a measure of the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. So let's replace this with some simple words. Standard deviation is the measure of the difference or the range of the open, the high, the low, and the close from its moving average. It's how the open, high, low, and close, that's the data set, is dispersed around the average point. It is calculated by the square root of the variance by determining the variation between each data point. So what it's doing is determining the variation between the open, the high, the low, and the close. And then figuring out what it, the relative mean is or what the average is, what that deviation is to, is to the moving average. If the data points are further from the average, there is a higher deviation within that set. So if your moving average is in the center and you had a very, very high, high, a medium point close, uh, the open of course where it was, and then you had just a little bit of a low, you had a big dispersion between that data set because what was there? There was a big move between the low and the high. And if that big dispersion was much farther removed from that moving average, which would have meant if the moving average is moving through the center that towards the bottom of that candle and your high was way up here, you had a big dispersion. So that means that there was a bigger deviation within that realm. So in finance, standard deviation is statistical measurement 
when applied to the annual rate of return of investment, it shed light on the historic volatility of that investment. The greater the standard deviation of a security, the greater the variance is between each price and the average, indicating a larger price range. For example, a volatile stock has a, sta has a high standard deviation, while a relatively stable blue chip stock is usually rather low. So, in its simplest form, the mean is simply the average of all the data points in the given set. In investing, for example, you might want to know the mean closing price for the last 20 days. Well, what would that be? The mean closing price for the last 20 days would be the moving average for the last 20 days based on the close. So this can be obtained by adding the closing prices for each session and dividing it by 20. Now, standard deviation is calculated based on the average, the distance between each data point, and the mean is squared, summed, and averaged. To put it another way, variance is derived by taking, believe me, we're finished this in a sec. Variance is derived by taking the mean of the data points, subtracting the mean from each data point, individually squaring each of those results, and then taking another mean of the, those squared. Standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. Okay. That was a lot of mathematical mumbo jumbo, but I think we got the point. Now, Bollinger Bands are fixed. They do not adapt to changing market conditions. They're based on the moving average, the 20 period moving average, the upper band based on a two standard deviation and the lower band based on a minus two standard deviation. So what do we have? Moving average, two standard deviations above, two standard deviations below. That would tell you the wider the bands get, what? The more volatile the market is. Now, Bollinger Bands are not about the visual shape or or the, yeah, the shape of the band. Sometimes you look at a band and it looks like an, a space alien. Sometimes they look like a dragon. Sometimes they look like a snake. Doesn't mean anything. There is no interpretation based on how squiggly they are. But we do know when the bands are narrowing and tight that the markets are congesting and lack volatility. We know when they widen, the markets are getting more and more, the markets have more volatility in them. But here, you can see the, this, but it doesn't mean that actually you had one big jump in the market. Here we have, well now here we see, we see the trades, the market is moving straight upward. We have a beautiful uptrend in the Euro US dollar. But look at the width of the bands. They're staying, steadily the same width because the markets are steadily moving up and they lack volatility. Even here where the price falls back down, the markets still pretty much can have the same volatility, the same distance. Sometimes we call this the Bollinger Band width. So it tells us that even though the market's trending up or trending down, it doesn't have volatility in that move. And that helps us a great deal. Why? Well, you would use a different risk management or risk reward ratio in a less volatile market where you'd have to have a higher risk reward ratio in a more volatile market. It also can give us entry points and exit points because when the market is less volatile or moves from A contracting market to a very volatile market, we know something's going to happen. And then we have other uses of the Bollinger Bands, because that's these are not the primary uses we talked about so far. These are pieces of information we can see on the band. But Bollinger Bands 
gives us a lot of clues about what the price is doing, or what it's trying to tell you. For instance, this is called riding the bands. When the band is moving in a nice upward trend, and that trend is strong, the band, the price should stay near that upper band. When price is moving along the upper band and then gets rejected by that band, it tells us that trend is starting to have some trouble. But as long as it stays above the moving average, that trend remains intact. So we can see down here, it came down, bounced off the moving average, tried to move back up. The minute it couldn't reach that upper band, we knew that this trend was seriously in trouble. When it broke this band here, the moving average here, if you had been in the market, that was definitely a time to reverse your scenario. We came down and we rode the band down, okay? And then we had this long upper, this long green candle. Now, we're not sure if it's going to make a thrust above. Now, it broke the moving average, but not with any conviction. But now that we see that it's moving towards the up, staying above the moving average and moving towards that upper band and starting to ride that band again, we can make some decisions about the market. Also, just like we're, when we're trading triangles, if the markets were congested, we know sooner or later, price has to break out of that, conge that congestion. Because price is either gonna trend up or trend down. Now it doesn't tell us which direction it's gonna go, but we, when we see this sideways movement here, we can then be ready for a breakout. We haven't made a decision which way it's gonna break, but we know as it moves farther and farther along, we're gonna get a break. So remember with Bollinger Band, it's all about the upper and the lower band. This area in between this background that I've got in pale green is really relatively unimportant to us. It's the relationship to price and the upper band and the lower band and to the moving average center line. So again, we can see here on the US dollar JPY. Now, here we have a downtrend and we have this beautiful down riding the bands going down. Price is rejected by the upper band, breaks the moving average, comes to the lower band and rides this band down beautifully. Here it gets rejected by that outer band, tries to push towards again, can't, telling us that trend is most likely over, but not necessarily until it breaks the moving average. Moves into sideways congestion, but then it breaks, stays above that moving average and then moves back to ride that band. Tells us the whole story about Bollinger Bands, about price using the bands. Now we can use Bollinger Bands for three primary uses. It gives us pattern recognition. You know, you've heard about double tops and heads and shoulders and double bottoms. Well, Bollinger Bands gives us what we call the M and the W. It gives us reversal signals. It helps us early, gives us early warning signals to identify reversals. And it gives us trend analysis to help us detect whether trends are continuing or coming to their conclusion. So the first pattern we get with Bollinger Bands is we get the W or the M. Now, to be honest with you, it really doesn't help us much in our style of trading. It's like if any of you have ever tried to trade patterns and tried to trade from head and shoulders, they're a complex pattern to take a long time to develop and usually the markets have moved on by the time they develop for our type of trading. Well, the W or the M, which are reversals, because we get the W coming off of a downtrend. As price is moving down and rises, as fancy gets rejected, bounces back up, breaks above the moving average, but can't reach the outer band. Comes back down 
And what's it do? It forms a bottom equal distance to the previous bottom where it was rejected. Moves back up, breaks above the moving average. And at this point, when it breaks that moving average, we know we have the final leg of this W formation. So this is called the N formation or the upside down N formation that we get before we get the M or the W. At this point, we could feel comfortable taking a long position. We get the reverse scenario, the M coming off of a uptrend. So in other words, price moves up, gets rejected, forms a top, comes back down. At this point, we have no idea we have the formation of anything. Gets rejected down here, turns around, comes back up. At this point, it forms the second top equal distance to the previous top. We do have the end formation. But until it comes down here, breaks the moving average, we don't even know. It's going to, and it could go this way, this way, this way, that way. No. Okay. So finally, when it breaks that, we could feel comfortable taking a short position. But that is a standard W and N formation that you would be more looking at for an environmental input or environmental clue to what you can expect for the average or in that from the Bollinger Band. Now we highly recommend combining the Bollinger Bands with the RSI indicator. It's a perfect match. There are two types of tops that you should be aware of. The top that comes after a trend move and price fails to reach the outer band or during consolidation and price spikes into the outer band which gets rejected immediately. This is a reversal signal into a short direction. So during trends, the moving average holds very accurately and a break of that moving average is usually a meaningful signal that the sentiment has shifted. The chart we're gonna look at in a second shows nicely how price trended between the outer band and the moving average, both on the way up and on the way down. So here we have price has broken the moving average, moves up, starts riding the upper bands. Beautiful ride upward, nice trade, nice choice for all of us. Okay. Finally, it gets rejected. Now, you could say, is this rejection here? Okay. Is this rejection here? Well, at the moment, because you can only trade at the wall, you would say, yes, we're getting a rejection. The trend is in, the trend is in jeopardy. But what happened was price never broke the moving average and bounced back up and began to ride the upper band. Again, we feel comfortable. We get rejections from the outer band all the time. As long as price stays above the moving average, that is the push and the ease in an average slice of the trend. Price moves back up, it starts riding that band up. And the rides don't have to be, don't get yourself fooled where you have to see lots of greens and lots of reds or lots of reds and lots. Of, doesn't matter about the color of the candle. It matters about where the candle is holding. Okay, now we move up on the upper band and we get a rejection. Tries to move up again, we get rejected again. Comes back down here breaks the moving average, and then we know we're in trouble. Now, it could have moved into sideways consolidation. It happens to be in this example. It moves down and it stays below the moving average and rides the band down. Gave us a very nice short trade. Now, if you notice, Bollinger Bands doesn't give you price information. It didn't tell you when to enter the market. It didn't tell you where to stop, put your stop loss. It didn't tell you when to exit the market. Now you would use the bands to help you determine the volatility and where you might want to place your stop loss, but it doesn't give you price. It also doesn't when it gives you rejection of bands or breaks the moving average. It doesn't tell you how long that move is going to be. So you have to use Bollinger Bands with other pieces of information. Well, Bollinger Bands are exceptionally helpful in determining when an asset 
as overshot to the upside downside is important to use the bands to also set risk conditions, not just entry points. Additionally, risk and reward should be set based on the width of the bands or the volatility with narrower risk reward during lower volatility and wider risk rewards during higher volatility. So in contrast to most other indicators, the Bollinger Bands are non-static indicators and they change their shape based on recent price movements and accurately measure momentum and volatility. Thus, we can use the Bollinger Bands to analyze the strength of trends and get a lot of information that way. So what do we want to pay attention to? There are just a few things you need to pay attention to. During strong trends, price stays close to the outer band. So I didn't say uptrends or downtrends, and I didn't say upper or lower band. During strong trending periods, whether upper or lower, whether uptrend or downtrend, price stays close to the outer band. The band above or the band below, they're both outer bands. If price pulls away from the outer band as the trend continues, it shows fading momentum. Repeated pushes into the outer band that don't actually reach the band show a lack of power. A break of the moving average is often a signal that the trend is, in, is ending or in jeopardy. So we can see here the whole story of this asset. But like everybody says to me, what good is it looking back and seeing this and this and this and this? Because you can only trade at the window, at the wall. So what happened an hour ago, what happened yesterday, what happened two days ago is of no consequence. And you're completely right. Because in our type of trading, we're only concerned where the markets are going next in a short term movement. So we have to be able to trade at the wall. But in order to do that, you have to be like a professional ball player. You have to practice all of your plays. You have to run them over and over. You have to scrimmage them so that when the new play starts, you're ready to execute. And you have no idea what the, uh, the defensive team's gonna do, but you have to be ready for every, so by, practicing by getting familiar, seeing the other patterns, and then learning to trust your judgment and trust what you're reading in the bands makes you able to predict. I mean, here we saw band trading down. We saw it get a reject, but we saw it moving sideways. Then we saw it finally break above the moving average. We saw the next candle above the moving average. Well, at this point, we might want to consider a long position. Now, we don't know what's going to happen next to next to next, and we might not want to even consider it till it reaches the upper band or reaches farther than the upper band. But we're getting ready because the bands have told us that the downtrend is over. Now, granted, this is a lot to remember. So if you look on your screen, there's a little thing that says handouts. I've put together three handouts for you. One is a little short video clip. It's just a little PowerPoint presentation that gives you a great Bollinger Bands trading strategy. There's no volume to it. There's no talking. It's just the slides and it's got the text I put on the bottom explaining each of the positions and how you would formulate your trade. The next I've given you is a PDF file and that's called the Bollinger Bands handout. That goes over everything we've talked about today and gives you charts and explanations that you can look at later. Plus, I've given you a technical indicators guide that goes over five of the most prominent technical indicators that you can combine well together. Because too many traders use popular indicators that tell them the same thing. I don't know how many traders are using RSI and stochastics simultaneously and they give you the same pieces of information. So I'm gonna share with you a little presentation I put together with you for you on how to combine different indicators with Bollinger Bands and use them together to determine an entry point, an exit point, and a stop loss point for your trade.
And then we're going to talk about how to use Bollinger Bands. Decatur 1, RSI. The Relative Strength Index compares the magnitude of recent gains to recent losses in an attempt to determine overbought and oversold conditions of an instrument. As you can see from the chart, the RSI ranges from 0 to 100. An instrument is deemed to be overbought once the RSI approaches the 70 level, meaning that it may be getting overvalued and is a good candidate for a pullback or reversal. Likewise, if the RSI approaches 30, it is an indication that the instrument may be getting oversold and therefore likely to reverse. Traders will often use the RSI either coming back out of its overbought or oversold areas as a signal or partial signal to enter a trade. As we can see, the RSI is often accurate when indicating when a market will reverse. A trader using RSI should be aware that large rallies and drops in the price of an instrument will affect the RSI by potentially creating false buy or sell signals. Traders often combine the RSI with other indicator signals such as MACD crosses. Indicator 2 MACD. The moving average convergence divergence is one of the most well known and used indicators in technical analysis. This indicator is made up of two exponential moving averages which help measure momentum in an instrument. These moving averages and the changing distances between them become the MACD. Convergence simply means the moving averages are moving close together and divergence simply means they are moving away from one another. When the shorter term moving average is above the longer term moving average this area of the indicator will show activity. When the shorter term moving average is below the longer term moving average, this area of the indicator will show activity. The center line, of which the MACD is plotted around, indicates where the moving averages are equal, and when the MACD passes through the center line, this indicates the moving average is crossing. The signal line, here in red, is a moving average of the MACD values themselves. Typical values for the MACD are 26 and 12 exponential moving averages and 9 for the signal line. The farther apart the moving average is and the greater the momentum, the farther away the MACD will be from the center line. Traders use MACD and signal line crosses, such as these, to indicate momentum trades. You can see how these crosses often match up with market moves. Traders also use the MACD crosses to indicate when momentum is coming out of the market and may use it as a signal to exit a trade. Indicator 3 Bollinger Bands A Bollinger Band starts off a simple moving average. It then has two standard deviations plotted away from it. That sounds a mouthful, but the important part is because standard deviation is a measure of volatility, Bollinger Bands adjust themselves to current market conditions. When the markets become more volatile, the bands widen, move further away from the average, and during less volatile periods, the bands contract, moving closer to the average. The tightening of the bands is often used by technical traders as an early indication that volatility is about to rapidly increase, as volatility often follows periods of lack of volatility. The markets spend most of the time within the bands, and when the price action reaches the edge of the bands, it is often more likely to reverse and come back into the range. This is used as a signal by reversal traders to take a trade. This is similar to the oversold and overbought conditions of the RSI. Indicator 4. Super Trend Indicator the super trend indicator is an excellent indicator of trend direction. It can be used as a foundation of a trading system that is based on trend following. One of the most popular ways to use this indicator is to enter the market after a pullback. For example, if the market is on a downtrend, indicated by red, wait for a green pullback and then re-enter the market once it turns red again. The same can apply in uptrending markets. Here we can see how this indicator accurately tracks market trends. It can be refined through the settings to match the specific instrument. Indicator 5. Confluence. The last indicator isn't a new one. It's indicator confluence, which means to use multiple indicators and their signals to take a trade. Here we have the RSI and MACD we looked at. We have the RSI moving into overbought territory here. Remember that indicates the market will reverse. However, we want to help us filter out false signals on the RSI, so we also look at the MACD to give us confluence. We can see it is indicating the momentum has come out of the market, as far as the market rallying or going up is concerned, and we have an MACD cross here. A signal to enter this short trade could be waiting for the RSI to come back out of the overbought and also waiting for the MACD cross. We can see that those combined signals are an indication that captures this trend. You can also use the opposite signals to indicate when the momentum is coming out of the market and it's more likely to reverse and the market to retrace back up the opposite direction of our trade and therefore is an exit signal. 
In addition to the RSI and MACD signals, we can add further confluence to this trade with a Bollinger Band and the Super Trend Indicator. We can see the market has hit the top of the Bollinger Band here, but we could also wait for the Super Trend Indicator to change red here before taking the short trade. And now we have the confluence of four indications. We have an RSI coming back out of overbought, we have an MACD cross, we have the market going to the edge of one of the deviations on the Bollinger Band, and we also have the super trend turning back to red. So as you can see, Bollinger Bands are a multifaceted trading indicator that can provide you with a lot of information about trend, buy and sell balances, and about potential trend shifts. Together with the moving average and the RSI, Bollinger Bands make a great foundation for any trading strategy. Now you can start out just adding Bollinger Bands onto your current trading strategy okay, and see how you get a used to them. See if they help give you better filters and better information. If you do want to learn more about Bollinger Bands, if you go to www.alvexo.com, click on their trading academy, they have lots of materials for you, or you can watch their videos online, or you can click on the live chat button and talk to a financial analyst one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be glad to answer any of your questions. So thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit about this great trading indicator. And don't forget, you can also go to www.bollinderbands.com and get everything directly from the horse's mouth there. So again, thank you very much for supporting investing.com, for supporting Alvexo, and for joining us today. Good luck with your trading now. Bye.